And in other big news now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has departed for his three-day visit uh, to France. During his visit, the Prime Minister will co-chair the AI Action Summit with French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris, hold bilateral talks with him and address over business leaders from over 100 countries. The summit is expecting high-profile attendees, including the U.S. Vice President J.D. Vance, Chinese Vice Premier Liu Guzhong, Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. And the question that arises is, why is this AI summit so important? Well, joining us now live on the broadcast is Ambassador Bhashwati Mukherjee, former diplomat. We also have Dr. Jaijit Bharacharya, President CDEPR, live with us. Mayur Akshi Das, founder and CEO Elixir AI, is also joining us live. Professor Madhu Narapat, editorial director of the Sunday Guardian, is joining the broadcast as well. Let me make a start with you first, Ambassador Bhashwati Mukherjee. What makes this... Uh, summit so crucial and uh, how big a moment is it for India to be co-chairing this summit? What does that also tell us about the India-France relationship, where it stands currently and where perhaps it will head to after this visit? It is a very significant visit and uh, India and France have a very strong strategic partnership. Uh, the fact that Prime Minister Modi will be co-chairing uh, an international summit on AI, it demonstrates also the trust that the West and particularly France has uh, in India's abilities uh, to be able to give new and innovative ideas on how to manage uh, AI as we move towards a new age of artificial intelligence, how we can control it, how we can use it, uh, how we can use it for development, how it can be used differently in countries in different stages of development, etc. So, it, it is quite similar, if you recall, uh, there to the kind of role we played uh, with the French in setting up the International Solar Alliance. So these are very, very important um, issues. And it is interesting that uh, the U.S. Vice President will be there. There will be an inter important interlocutor from China, etc. Uh, there, there are expected to be very interesting uh, bilaterals with some of the others who are attending. And of course, Prime Minister himself has a very full program thereafter, bilateral with the French, and a visit to Matai, and to pay a tribute to the uh, graves of uh, <coughs> soldiers uh, who helped uh, the, the then colonial powers uh, to win World War I and later World War II. So, and then, of course, he leaves for his historic uh, meeting with President Trump. So, all in all, uh, a very interesting and very important meeting. Uh, the timing is such that it clashes with the budget session of parliament, but the fact that Prime Minister decided to go also shows the importance to be attached to the invitation to the Indo-French strategic partnership and to the important role of AI and, how, and the fact that it needs to be managed in a, in a manner by which it, it, can be, it can take the world forward, not backward, because it has to be managed properly. It's, it's, it raises the whole issue of ethical, dynamic ethical issues. Uh, some of which I'm sure will be discussed uh, at the summit. Uh, yes, sir. Let me, in fact, take that to uh, Professor Madhav Nalapath as well. Professor Madhav Nalapath, uh, how important uh, is this AI summit? Also, you know, what can we perhaps hope to gain from it as we also look to become a leader in the field of AI? There will be big tech giants also. Prime Minister Modi will be meeting both at the dinner today and on the sidelines of this summit. Uh, how important is this for India as we, of course, you know, move to become leaders in these futuristic sectors and fields? Well, I think it's uh, frankly the most important component of the French visit. And uh, another very important component is the fact that he's taking time off to go to Marseille to visit the cemeteries. More than two million Indian soldiers fought uh, the, in the First World War, about two, uh, two million in the Second World War. Uh, about 26 million uh, indirect support to the First World War, nearly 40 million indirect support to the Second World War. And it's a really a very striking that neither Britain nor any other European power uh, has, in, including Poland, that was liberated from Nazi tyranny, uh, including by many of these soldiers. The fact is that India played a very crucial role in both the world wars. And I think I'm glad the Prime Minister is drawing attention to it. And I do hope that uh, European countries will take 
the Indian role, the way it should be taken, has a very significant role in their victory over Nazism and fascism in the last war and in the previous war against German militarism. So having said that, I want to say that uh, it's a very, very important visit. There's no question about it. Although, of course, President Macron has been making some slightly odd statements from the Indian point of view that, uh, you know, we have to uh, basically, uh, I mean, ensure that we are dealing from both the US and the PRC. Now, the fact is, maybe he's made the same mistake of uh, uh, lumping friends in with foes that President Trump uh, has made repeatedly since he became president. A friend is very different from a foe and should be treated differently. In the case of France, the US is a NATO ally. It's been a friend for a very long time. It significantly helped in the reconstruction uh, of France. Uh, and uh, it's very different from China, which is a predatory power. So I was a bit surprised about that. But having said that, I want to say that uh, it's very important that Prime Minister Modi is the co-chair of this meeting for a simple reason <coughs> that it shows that in the world of uh, alternative uh, intelligence, India is seen as a frontline power. And which is the case. You, you've seen that now in space. You've seen that now in the online space. And now you're seeing it in this very powerful new technology of artificial intelligence, which I'm sure India will lead in the coming years. Thank you, Uday. All right, let me, in fact, uh, quickly uh, also then uh, take that to Dr. Jayjit Bharacharya. Dr. Jayjit Bharacharya, according to you, uh, you know, what makes this summit uh, special, crucial? Uh, what do you believe uh, is going to be the outcome of it for India uh, moving ahead? And uh, just give us a bit of, you know, facts about this AI summit, which, of course, is taking place there in France. We can see visuals of it now on our screens. It has already kick-started. You know, uh, the summit is being held at a very uh, interesting time in terms of artificial intelligence. In a span of uh, three to four months, we have seen how uh, the uh, leadership in AI has uh, kind of flipped uh, uh, with U.S. taking seemingly an unsurmountable leap forward in AI and then China upsetting it. Uh, and, and that opens up um, not just the, the race in AI from a geotechnical perspective, but the fact that there are there is multi multi billion dollars of economic opportunities that gets opened up, and many sectors getting destroyed because of AI, and uh, that also has an implications on security. It has an implication on ethical challenges, and the implication on how do you regulate it? Uh, what are the future global regulatory frameworks? How will people adhere to it? I mean, as you would have seen in um, uh, in sci-fi movies. Uh, and predictions that um, you know AI can, AI can possibly uh, be used for significant damages. We see deep fakes of uh, various global leaders floating around. There are channels of Elon Musk uh, spouting geopolitically insensitive uh, statements, uh, which are obviously deep fakes, and that has a deep impact on how business is conducted, how people's perceptions is formed, how our governments are, are created and destroyed, uh, and how we interact with each other. Now, um, how do we control all of this? What is the new regulatory framework? Can we have the kind of agreement that we had on chemical warfare, where there has been a more or less a chemical warfare ban and people have adhered to it, more or less, except for some exceptions? Can we have such frameworks in AI? Uh, and also, in addition to it, the fact that AI is asymmetrical in nature, which means that any 14-year-old um, you know, kid in a basement uh, with a laptop can actually start using AI in either a positive <coughs> or in a negative manner. And uh, those are the challenges which are going to be discussed. Now, what is it in it for uh, India? Well, at least India is on the high tables of creating the future frameworks for, uh, for managing AI. Will that really lead to something? Um, that's a, a billion dollar question because uh, the issues that are being uh, discussed or that will be discussed in the AI update are extremely complex issues. There is no straight answer. Do we regulate something which is just started growing? AI still is very, very nascent and recent. So if you start putting standards on it, if you start putting too many regulations on it, you will end up hindering it. 
and uh, countries which follow the regulation will get left behind and countries who break those regulations will move forward. Uh, and so therefore it's, it's very complex and if we do not put regulations, then we'll be in a situation where AI is being used in extremely harmful manner. Just the simple deep fakes are going to impact um, something as sacred as democracy, as elections and so on and so forth. Uh, so um, this will be very interesting uh, set of discussions to observe. And it's great that India is on the high chair and uh, it will probably lead to India itself adopting certain steps domestically in terms of AI uh, and therefore be on a, in a position to guide the, the world in a global manner. Okay, let me uh, also, you know, quickly uh, get in Mayurakshi Das now. Mayurakshi Das, you know, uh, uh, as of course someone who knows this sector very, very well, uh, wh where does AI in India stand right now? Which direction are we headed in? What could be the outcome of this summit? Um, as far as, of course, India's, uh, the fact that we are co-chairing this summit also is concerned, uh, how big a deal is that for AI and India? And will the world now step up and take notice of us and our potential in this very futuristic tech domain? Yes, thank you, Uday. So, again, I'd like to say here that we need, India needs no further validation from the world uh, about being a leader in innovative AI. Um, the unique differentiating factor here for this conference and um, India, India co-chairing this entire conference is the fact that this AI conference is about responsible and ethical AI. You know, AI is, uh, you know, a phrase, everybody's on the bandwagon. Uh, we saw last week what, you know, a couple of weeks, what's been happening with DeepSeek and OpenAI, etc. cetera. Uh, we've been all worried about uh, the regulations um, at a global level not coming in before all this in innovation is happening. But I think India has with, with co-chairing this event and uh, Prime Minister Modi jumping on a plane, given his schedules and really making it a point to attend this conference, is to show that India is all about responsible and... Hello? Please yes, go ahead. Sorry. Please it's go ahead, about, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, it's about it's being it's not just about being part of the entire AI reformation uh, disruptive industry, but being part of the responsible and ethical AI. It was the G7 conference, uh, if I recollect, in 2019, 2020, uh, pre-COVID, that Prime Minister Modi and um, you know really attended. Uh, uh, I mean, I think uh, that was the time when they collaborated collaborated with France. Uh, about uh, you know really subscribing to carbon free uh, solar power solar and uh, electricity power and um, you know with the g20 where he really promised uh, you know carbon free footprint in the near future i think this is a huge affirmation towards india keeping its promises on responsible AI flying high. So super proud uh, of this step and super proud that we are participating, not just in another AI conference and um, trying to kind of uh, get at each other's <coughs> support in terms of who is the AI superpower. It really doesn't matter. Um, it is about AI for social uh, good. And um, that is what AI is meant to be. Unfortunately, there are the deep, uh, deep fakes of the world, which comes with I think it comes with any um, any solution, any any disruptive solution. But uh, India has clearly made a mark and differentiated itself with this conference. Thank you. Absolutely. Also, you know, now with the prime minister there uh, meeting with various tech giant CEOs as well. What potential collaborations could we hope for, Mayurakshi? So uh, extremely interesting. I'm really hoping that the largest collaboration would be for Prime Minister Modi and his team to discuss with the CEOs about not reinventing the wheel. We really don't want to be in the competition when there is one AI, you know, open AI, natural language model, um, DeepSeek doing the same thing. We want to stand apart and really innovate 
we want to be first timers, not follow the trend, right? So I'm really hoping that Prime Minister Modi gets cues from the topest uh, CEOs of these multinational organizations to understand which kind of channel they're going going forward and there is no reduplication of uh, uh, or reinventing any of the innovative solutions because i think that is a huge uh, waste of resource material um, you know all of that i mean open ai invested a billion dollars to uh, 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 to come up with chat GPT and now there's deep deep seek who's done it in a few million dollars we definitely don't want to follow that trend even you know six million dollars is a waste uh, down the drain right so I'm, I'm really hoping we are doing going to do something extremely differentiated we're already doing it on the defense side of it hopefully we do it uh, uh, you know in areas like solar energy etc uh, with on the carbon footprint side so that is what I'm really really um, uh, looking forward to all right uh, well let me uh, quickly now also go back across to uh, Ambassador Bashpati Mukherjee Ambassador Bashpati Mukherjee as far as of course now these uh, collaborations go as well hopefully uh, you know these opportunities these summits uh, you know these conferences offer a, a chance for India to pitch to these global companies as well to come and invest uh, you know in India to come and make in India to come and collaborate with India isn't it which is why such summits are so important for world leaders like Narendra Modi in fact there are many other world leaders also like I just uh, you know mentioned at the start of the show including the US vice president who will also be in attendance at this particular event I think such summits uh, as my co-panelist Mayur Akshi just pointed out so nicely uh, provide an opportunity for our Prime Minister and his team to interact with the best and the brightest and to work out what would be in India's interest uh, and as an ethical nation who has always looked at the ethics of any new and emerging technology, uh, we would be in a position to, be, to judge uh, who to invite to invest and how. And uh, AI is something that can be hijacked even in India uh, because it doesn't take much uh, for, as you used to say earlier you know that to to to, uh, to make a bomb even a, a school kid can make a bomb so the, the same is even more true for AI so it's very good that we've got out of the bandwagon so fast uh, and that we would work out solutions that are good for world peace and, and, and good for India and uh, the kind of people who are attending the summit are the brightest and the best and I think definitely, uh, because we have a, a very high-profile delegation that is the company, the Prime Minister, I'm told uh, there would be opportunities to discuss on the margins. In fact, in my experience, 39 years as a diplomat, usually the most interesting discussions are those which happen on the margins or outside the conference room. Uh, because inside the conference room, sometimes it can be just very stiff and, you know, right. one plus the record taker, etc. The dis really interesting discussions happen outside, okay. which is going to happen, I'm sure, uh, tomorrow. And we will see the results uh, shortly. But I'm, okay. I am really, really impressed that in the middle of a, a hectic budget session, yes. uh, so many other things, he decided, Prime Minister okay. Modi decided, that this is okay. important for him. Okay, my, my, my thanks to all of our guests. We've run out of time. Let's slip into a short break. We're back on the other side, tracking this big story and lots more.